table, let me do some introductions before we get started. Kim Furlow with Chesterfield Arts, thanks Hello. for being here. Also a veteran of radio, so I'm expecting big things. Oh, thank you for mentioning that. <laughs> I, like, I like the voice already, very good. Uh, welcome back to the show, Juan Williams Chavez. First time you're on was uh, via Google Hangout, I believe. So, so welcome back in, in, oh, thanks, in, thanks. into the studio. It's good to be back. Uh, Pruitt Igo B Sanctuary is one mm -hmm. of the things you're involved with. And Cindy Redmond Jenkins, with uh, she's a community organizer, and also yes. involved in the arts very much. So uh, let's. I want to hear what you think about this. What? How? How have the arts impacted the neighborhoods and the places that you live? Well, I can speak for Chesterfield for certain. Um, Chesterfield Arts and um, a lot of the community organizations have partnered up, and Chesterfield has been working with the city of Chesterfield to make um, elevate the um, the arts in the community. Um, we have uh, lots of arts classes that we provide for children, and, and children with special needs is a is a focus for us as well. We work with children with autism and special um, special needs like. Uh, Down syndrome, things like that, and we think it's a, a, an extraordinary way to help children of any age or any ability uh, participate in the arts. And I think it elevates our community to to work with children that maybe don't get that special attention at uh, mainstream schools because they need a lot of time and attention. That frankly, teachers are so busy they just they maybe can't take that time in an art class to give them. So you're seeing an impact in a real way at, at, the, at the kid level, if you will. It's true. Uh, parents have told us that the children are using arts to express themselves. Uh, we have one little girl named Suni who doesn't talk a lot. Uh, she uh, has Down syndrome. And she came into the classes and she expressed herself through her art. And her mother told us um, at the exhibition in which Suni's work was um, put side by side with a professional artist, she said, um, she said that Suni said she's a real artist now, and she, that was so, one of the first things that she had said about her artwork, and the rest of it was expressed on the canvas. I, I'll open it back up to you guys. I mean, tell me, do you see it happening in your, in your neighborhood as well? Oh yeah, I mean, I think the one thing that art does is that artists are in the imagination business. You know, they have the potential really in, you know, envisioning the potential of something that maybe the masses don't see have potential. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, uh, you know, seeing a, a kind of a defunct neighborhood, you know, artists can go in there uh, and use really limited resources and, you know, start producing culture. I mean, artists are uh, cultural producers and when culture starts being produced, that's when kind of a domino effect happens. You know, you get businesses coming in there, you get restaurants coming in there, you want, you know, it becomes a hub for activities. So uh, I think that's what really art, you know, has a, you know, uh, has a really effective impact on, especially a lot of these neighborhoods in St. Louis that need to have, you know, a boom of growth. So, you, uh, so well, with uh, my neighborhood, uh, specifically, and, and your neighborhood is Pagedale, Pagedale and, and you're you're getting kind of in the Cherokee area, just for reference. Uh, I started off in Cherokee. I'm in Old North now. Okay, very good. I'm sorry. So, Page in the Pagedale area. In the Pagedale area, um, I'm working with uh, the Pink House. Well, right. the children actually named it the Pink House, and it's with Rebuild Foundation with Regina Martinez, but before we had the Pink House, which is, a, it's new, it's fresh, but the kids are overwhelming. We're actually outgrowing the area that we have, but tell, it, was, it tell, was my front yard. Tell, so. tell people what the Pink House is for those who don't know. Well, the Pink House is a, a basically a creative arts center. It's, it's the first, it's a pilot program that was initiated by Theaster Gates of the Rebuild Foundation. And um, it's an extension of the first one, I believe it's in Hyde Park. And um, he actually wants to establish a community art-based area or facility in every city in the United States of America, which I think is so much needed because you no longer have arts in the schools because of the funding. Um, you have a lot of kids who have a lot of different artistic abilities that are never ever tapped on, especially in, a, in the area that we're in. We're not close to Chesterfield. We're not in a plighted area such as Pure Igo, but we're in this small community with all of this energy and imagination and skills that are waiting there just to burst out. So, so what are the arts? I mean, you said imagination. We've heard imagination, uh, bees, and a uh, pink house. What, what, what are the arts? Cooking. Um, learning basically and we also teach them how to take care of the land how to take care of the, the pink house how to take care of, because it's a large ground and it has two wells on it has a water well and how to appreciate it um, they actually come in and they set up the rules 
and we sit down and we talk, well, what do you feel should be acceptable or how do you feel you should be treated? So they set the rules and then when new friends, whom they tell how much fun they're having, come with them, then they initiate it and make them or insist that they abide by the rules. So it's cooking, it's, it's knitting, it's crocheting, it's sculpting, it's wood burning. It's creative expression, it's storytelling, exactly. it's exactly. sculpture, it's writing, painting, drawing, it's all, I mean, you could go on and on and on. Literary arts, there's right. performing arts. We do the performing also. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of, I mean, art is, to me, art is creative expression and storytelling and making sure that the story gets out there, no matter who tells it. And, and I making think it should sure be they know expressive. there's no mistakes. There's no mistakes. There's right. no, to have a stereotype of these little children think that, okay, I colored outside the lines and tear it up in frustration. We don't even have to, you know, we, we don't have that anymore. So, okay, so what is the value of this, of what all you're talking about? The value of it is that they learn, that they do have the skill inside them. They learn that it's okay to express it before they end up in penitentiary and start drawing and making greeting cards and finding out that they have a wasted skill. And I've seen it done over and over again. So to be able to touch them and reach them at this vital point in their life. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are boys that are knitting. And you know, young boys, African American, wouldn't think that it's macho to knit, but they're loving it. <laughs> so who would know? I love it. What, tell me the value in Old North. You, you said that's what's where you call home now. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, for, to, to kind of go back to the question about like what is art, I mean, for me art is a way of thinking. It, it's a way of like contemplating and cultivating I ideas. Uh, and that way of thinking can be applied to any discipline. So for me, art is very interdisciplinary, you know, like, uh, you know, I go work in the art world, but a lot of times I work with school teachers or the restoration yes. group or something like that. So I think, you know, Art really, I mean, the value of, of, of working with artists is that they have a way of approaching something that doesn't, you know, they, they kind of step outside the box. They, they're really good problem solvers and they can really connect the dots. Um, you know, just going beyond just, you know, the traditional notion of art making, which is like selling, selling artwork and stuff like that. Uh, my interest is, you know, artists as thinkers and, and collaborators and, you know, what happens when you put an urban planner, an architect, you know, a church and an artist together, you know, they all have good ideas, but, you know, the artist can really, uh, you know, really add value to that by problem solving, by, you know, putting, you know, poetics to it. And when you put poetics to something, you, what, what happens is that you're able to uh, have a personal connection to something. Uh, and at the same time have like a communal connection with something. Are they leaders? Oh, yeah. Are, is, are artists leaders in our communities? I think Most so. Definitely. I think, you know, if you can take a child and put them, uh, Chesterfield Arts did this uh, a year or so ago, took a group of high school students, middle school students, gave them a project and they said, you're going to lead this project and you're going to make this happen. And they went out and took the Chesterfield levee, the new levee wall out there that was built a few years back, they took that entire wall and paint by numbers, created an art piece of artwork on that wall, and then they incorporated about 150 to 200 other students, yeah. and they got out there and painted that entire wall and made it a piece of art that wasn't there before. They, create, they took that project on and they made it 